Hello students, this is Professor Faiz Rauth from Jain College of Engineering, Department of MBA. I have completed Unit 1 and Unit 2. Okay, we, Unit 1 was regarding the introduction of economics, microeconomics and microeconomics and few three, three theories basically uh, of uh, manager economics basically. So one was Baumil's hypothesis, one was Williamson's hypothesis uh, and one was Marison's hypothesis that we have completed in the first module. In the second module, it was about demand analysis, supply analysis, elasticity of demand. Okay, what are the determinants, different determinants of demand? And then we had in the uh, in the end the demand forecasting. So when we have forecasted the demand, okay, what will be our demand in the near future? So in that case, the company needs to analyze how much it needs to produce and when it's need to produce. Okay. So that's what. Okay, sorry. Okay. Fine. Apologies for that. Okay, so uh, the company needs to decide how much it needs to produce when it needs to produce. So from the demand forecasting analysis, they can predict that. And what is the cost involved in the production of those items? And when the when we are producing. Uh, the items when the cost is uh, incurring when we are incurring the cost then uh, along with that we will be generating the revenue when we are selling the items so depending upon that we will be analyzing what is the break even point at which we are not having any loss or any profit that means with whatever we have invested we had recovered it and then from when uh, the profit starts and when we get losses okay so that will determine in this module so this model is about the production function with one variable input laws of variable proportions production function with two variable inputs and laws of returns to scale indifference curves isoquant curves and iso cost line least cost combination factor uh, economies of scale diseconomies of scale then technological progress and production function types of cost cost curves cost output relationship in the so short run and in the long run lac curve break even analysis meaning assumption determination of break-even analysis, limitation, uses of break-even analysis in managerial decision making and uh, there are a few problems related to that. Okay, so let's begin with the, I'll go through uh, quickly uh, with this module. Okay, uh, the theory of production, uh, in the production part, we have inputs, we have outputs and between input and output there is a process. So in a in any production there are various kinds of inputs which will be put into process and a output will be generated out of it okay so the manager of the business firm endeavor to minimize the production cost of a given output in other words maximize the output from the given quantity of inputs in their effort to minimize the cost of production the fundamental question that managers are faced with are how can production be optimized with given resources? How does output respond to change in quantity of inputs? Uh, how does technology matter in reduction in the uh, cost of production? How can the least cost combination of inputs be achieved? Given the technology, what happens to the rate of return when more plants are uh, added to the firm? So these are the question uh, the manager economist uh, will be or the managers will be facing. Okay. So uh, there are some theories which we'll be uh, discussing here related to that. So input and output. So there are some fixed inputs uh, and there are some variable inputs. Fixed inputs are uh, in the short run they are uh, going to remain fixed, these fixed inputs. And the variable inputs keep on changing as and when we change a small factor. Okay, For example, labor, raw material, uh, it will be keep on changing. Whereas fixed inputs like land, okay or machinery they will not uh, keep on changing uh, at least they'll remain constant for a short period of time so they are considered as fixed inputs okay then we have a uh, two production uh, like short run and long run production so depending upon that fixed and variable inputs which we have discussed in uh, above so we have short run uh, production and long run production okay so a uh, production of a good production of a goods uh, involves timer the reference to time period involves a production process and another important concept used in production analysis the two uh, reference period are short run and long run the short run refers to a um, period of time in which the supply of certain raw materials like plant building machinery is fixed okay so these are kind of a fixed uh, inputs uh, 
or inelastic and they are used in fixed quantity. In the short run, therefore, production of a commodity can be increased by increasing the use of only variable inputs like labor. So while analyzing short run inputs, we are only going to change the short uh, run or uh, variable inputs and then we will determine what is the change in the output. On the other hand, on the long run refers to a period of time in which the supply of all the input is elastic but not enough to permit a change in technology. That is, in the long run, all the inputs are variable. Therefore, in the long run, production of a commodity can be increased by employing more both variable and fixed inputs. So, in the long run, there are a certain, uh, there are almost all the things that will be varying, okay, including technology, machinery, land, where we are in increasing the plants or anything. So, in long run, uh, mostly everything will be changing uh, as far as inputs are concerned, processes are concerned. Mm, whereas in the short run, uh, few things will remain constant, will be remain fixed, and uh, only few things will be varying. So, first we'll. Uh, uh, go through the short run productions okay so this is about production function it's a mathematical representation of input and output relationship so in this we are taking um, labor and capital these two are uh, the important short run uh, production variables which we are we will be taking uh, while going through production in this module for the short run so uh, and also from these two we will take one labor presently and then we will go through uh, both okay so there is a, a short run loss of production in that production with one variable input is given in that one variable we are going to change the labors and then we will uh, we'll be determining what is the uh, change in the output so the law of diminishing returns to one variable input there is a law which which says that it states that when more and more units of a variable input are used with a given quantity of fixed inputs so all the inputs we are keeping it as fixed and only one input we are varying okay so that is a variable input in this case we are varying the number of labors the total output may initially increase at an increasing rate that means output will definitely increase but it will increase at an increasing rate it will increase very fast and then maybe at a constant rate okay so initially it increased fast then slowly it is increasing but uh, it is not increasing at a that rate which was it it was increasing earlier so in the beginning it is increasing very fast then it is increasing slow but it eventually increase at a diminishing rate but slowly it will increase but at a diminishing rate and then it will start to decrease after this that is the marginal increase in the total output decreases eventually okay when additional units of variable factor are used given the quantity of fixed factors okay so that is what it is so uh, assuming that uh, in the law of diminishing return uh, labor is the only variable input capital is constant labor is homogeneous that means all the labors are uh, working uh, um, in the similar manner okay none of the labor is very efficient none of the labor is very slow or nothing like that all the labors are equally uh, equally talented and uh, are uh, working um, and are producing same number of outputs when they are working and the state of technology is given uh, input prices are given okay so nothing is changing uh, everything is constant and we are getting this here so well in this case uh, there is stage one stage two and stage three in the stage one process when the labors are increasing from one two three four five until six uh, the output is increasing at an increasing rate okay then after 6 7 8 9 and 10 the output is still increasing but it is not increasing very fast it is increasing but it is not increasing very fast it is increasing slowly and then after uh, 11 12 uh, the output uh, starts to decrease okay uh, and this if we want to represent in a marginal and an average cost what do you mean by average cost uh, sorry average production uh, average production is the total production Okay, total outputs which are produced divided by the total number of uh, total number of labors at that time at that time. Okay, so suppose uh, there are maybe uh, if suppose there are six labors which we are considering and there are six labors are producing 400 as the output. So 400 divided by six will be the average. Okay, and for example, 10 labors are there and they are producing maybe 600. So mm, 600 divided by 10. So that is the output and then here at 12 okay so at 12 maybe 500 uh, units have been produced by 12 workers so 500 divided by 12 so in this case as and when uh, we are increasing the number of labors 
the average output is increasing and then afterwards the average output remains same and then it starts to decrease okay so this is how it is represented as a p l okay so initially the average output uh, sorry average production was increasing and then it remained almost same and then it start to decrease and when and this and this one which is mpl which is uh, marginal production so uh, this is the difference between the two outputs okay so uh, for example at one labor uh, we are producing maybe uh, 20 units and at two we are producing 100 units so there is a difference uh, of 80 so when two workers are working together the second worker has added 80 units okay only he is not producing 80 both are producing 100 but because of uh, the second labor both the workers are produ now producing 100 so he uh, the second worker has contributed 80 units in production and the first worker uh, only one worker uh, was contributing 20 units so 80 is the marginal increase in this so again uh, going through the same example uh, if the third worker is producing uh, somewhere around 150 units the second uh, and two workers are producing 100 units so after addition of third worker uh, the output has increased to 50 units something like that okay so but in the stage when it is increasing at a increasing rate okay so don't take this uh, graph uh, on its face value just uh, keep a track that in the marginal production in the stage 1 the out the marginal production is increasing at a increasing rate okay so that's the reason the marginal production is increasing very high okay then at this point then at this stage maybe it is it should not go below okay somewhat here from here it will start to drop so in the stage 2 the production is increasing but the marginal increase for example from 7 uh, from output of 7 labors minus the output of 6 labors the there is not much increase okay uh, so in the average production also we have uh, seen a kind of a constant which we are getting in marginal production there is a decrease in this in this case okay so marginal production kept on in uh, decreasing decreasing and when there is a decrease in the output here okay the marginal production goes uh, to negative okay to explain this further okay so to explain this further you can consider this table okay number of workers are increasing uh, sorry the uh, yeah the number of workers are increasing in this case this is the total product which uh, is been calculated from that graph there is a marginal um, product marginal product how we have got 72 minus 24 138 minus 72 216 minus 138 so like this we have got uh, the marginal product and then the average product we have got by total production divided by the number of workers so we have got the average product like uh, here okay so in this case uh, marginal product uh, 24 48 66 78 84 84 okay somewhat it is constant here then uh, when we are uh, doing difference of these two figures then 78 66 48 24 uh, in this stage 2 the marginal product is decreasing okay the output is increasing no doubt output is increasing but the uh, difference is uh, is reducing okay then at this case when the output is decreasing the marginal products becomes negative so in the first stage we are, we are getting increasing return at the second stage we are getting diminishing returns at the third stage we are getting negative returns okay so i hope this clears uh, the graph as well okay uh, so this is what is explained in this okay we will uh, i'll move on to the production with two variable inputs where and two variable inputs uh, are two variable will be labor and capital okay uh, so uh, labor and capital uh, as per this uh, iso quant which we are will be discussing okay okay so moving forward I'll, uh, before moving forward i'll just read this in the preceding section we have discussed the short term laws of production that is technological relationship between inputs and output assuming labor to be the only input variable capital held is constant in this section we proceed to discuss the long term uh, laws of production that is nature of relationship between inputs and output under condition that both labor capital 
uh, sorry, inputs la uh, capital and labor are variable factors in the long run supply of both the inputs is supposed to be elastic and therefore firms can use large quantities of both labor and capital with larger employment of uh, capital labor the scale of production increases the nature of changing relationship between the changing scale of input and output is referred to as the laws of returns to scale the laws of returns to scale are generally explained through the production function and iso cost iso quant curve technique the most common and simple tool of analysis is iso quant curve technique so we are going to discuss uh, regarding the iso quant iso quant is nothing uh, we have two inputs labor and capital we are going to change the labor and capital simultaneously and then we will be determining uh, how we are getting the output how we are getting the production how we are doing the production basically okay so wow what is iso quant basically uh, so iso quant is derived from the greek word which means equal okay uh, in latin and uh, quantus stands for quantity so uh, what we are saying is iso quant curve means same quantity curve or equal product curve or production indifference curve so if you get an exam what is indifference curve you can explain this okay uh, production indifference curve kya hai so you can explain iso quant curve okay and iso quant can be defined as a locus of points representing various combination of two inputs in our case it is labor and capital okay so you can go through the assumptions here um, and then this is the curve which i am talking about iso quant curve so on the y axis we have capital on the x axis we have labor okay and if i have four four amounts or four units of capital which i am investing in the business and i am employing one labor one unit of labor at a time then my production is at point a that means i am going to produce output which is equal to a and if suppose i decrease the capital to 3 units and i increase the labor by 2 units then i'll get the output at b the same way for k2 and k l3 and k1 capital and l4 labor that means 4 units of labor 1 unit of capital i'm getting production at d so if i join a b c d then i get this kind of a curve so at this curve my whatever output i'm getting is equal which is 100 so production at d is 100 production at c is at 100 production at b is at 100 production at a is at 100 so in all the four cases i am getting equal production okay so equal production curve or equal quantity curve or iso quant curve which we call this and the production which we are getting is 100 now if i suppose if suppose i want to increase my production from 100 to 200 then i need to make this iso quant curve that means at four units of capital i cannot employ one unit of labor i need to increase the amount of labor and come here so maybe somewhere around three units of labor or maybe pani maybe two and a half or something like that so the here somewhere i'll be get coming okay so at same amount of capital where i was using here i need to employ more number of labor in order to get 200 as the quantity okay the same goes uh, here as well if i draw a line here or oh, sorry curve here i can get 300 or above that it 400 or above that 500 600 like that so this is what is iso quant curve so there are few basic properties that iso quant curve is okay you can go through this in the explanation of the above graph so in that case a property uh, iso quant curve has a negative slope obviously it is uh, it can be seen easily from here okay it has a negative slope iso quant curves are convex to origin you cannot have a concave iso quant curve it will always be convex to the origin so from the origin if you see they will have a convex uh, like figure iso quant curves are non intersecting and non tangential okay so a uh, two iso quant curves cannot be like this so you cannot say 100 and 200 are meeting at a point m so at point m i can produce 100 as well as 200 units so that is irrelevant so now they will be touching one uh, each other okay so this is and this cannot uh, this is not possible iso quant curves cannot be tangential or intersecting and the upper iso quant represents higher level of output the uh, from these two 100 we are getting at this iso quant curve which is at the low, uh, lower part of the graph and at 200 uh, is at the higher iso quant curve so the if i want to draw 300 uh, units then i'll be drawing the iso quant curve above uh, above the both 
curves okay so this is how the property of isocon curves uh, is and the expansion path or path of increasing production scale well in this case so what is the expansion path of isocon curve expansion path is the above I upper isocon curve if i keep on drawing it so in this path okay which maybe starts from somewhere to origin somewhere above the origin in this path which is somewhere around 45 degrees to the origin if i extend it down so at a rate of 45 uh, degree angle there is an uh, if you draw a line uh, on that line uh, um, in that path basically my isocon curve uh, will be i can be drawing the isocon curves in that path and in that path my uh, production is increasing so iq1 is lesser than iq2 which is lesser than iq3 and if i draw above uh, iq4 and iq5 and iq6 it is increasing in this in this path this is what is expansion path okay and then uh, there is a budget line or iso cost line okay uh, iso budget line or iso cost line is again a combination of capital and labor so this is the uh, this is the line okay so i have a budget in which i can employ maximum this much capital i can employ maximum these many labors for my activity for my production so i can i don't have a option of go, of employing more labor than this okay i don't have any option to employ more capital than this so within this limit i can uh, vary any capital from here any labor from here and then i can determine what is the budget okay whether i want to come here okay in the middle that means this much capital this much labor or i need to come here okay so this much capital and this much and these many labors it does, it's up to me so this is my budget line i cannot go so again it can be called as iso cost line iso cost same cost so on this line whatever cost i am incurring is same it is uh, any amount of change in my labor and capital okay okay so mo before moving on to the next one uh, this the types of isocon curve isocon curve can be linear like this it need not be uh, a curve okay they can be a line which is similar to iso cost which we see just a, just a few seconds back isocon curve can also be like this isocon curve can be l shaped they can be like this they need not be a curve they can be some sometimes they can be like this they can be kinged isocon curve kinged isocon curve means they it will not be a smooth curve okay there will be a certain um, straight line and points which they will be meeting so they can be a kinged isocon curve also okay so moving on uh, laws of returns to scale laws of returns to scale is when the output is not increasing proportionately okay it is not increasing at a constant rate sometimes where we are seen in the one variable input when we were increasing the labor initially the output is increasing at a increasing rate then at a constant rate then at a diminishing rate uh, in this case there a total output may increase more than proportionately okay it is it is not normal it is a super normal uh, increase okay or else output may increase proportionately a normal increase and total output may increase less than proportionately that means uh, not normal it is below normal okay and so in that case we get three kind of laws first is the laws of increasing returns to scale constant returns to scale and diminishing returns to scale okay i'll go one by one laws of increasing returns to scale in this case in this graph okay my isocon curves are not increasing proportionately so for, for example from 10 i am getting 25 i should get 20 but i am getting 25 so it is increasing at a increasing rate so from 25 i should get maybe 35 or something like that 35 or 45 but it, i am getting 50 so a uh, double of this okay in this case it was more than double uh, in this case it is like so it is increasing at a increasing rate fast increase hoga so maybe next isocon curve i will be getting maybe somewhere around uh, 150 or something like that okay next isocon curve if i make so it is increasing at a increasing rate so if i want to talk about constant returns to scale in constant returns to scale it is properly increasing 
at a constant at a constant rate 10 20 30 and above this it will be 40 so at a constant rate it is increasing and uh, the laws of de decreasing returns to scale in this case it is decreasing at a decreasing rate slowly it is increasing but at very slowly so from from 10 it is going to 18 okay not even 20 so from 18 it is going to 24 okay not even uh, 20 uh, 26 when you are okay it is 24 so again it is increasing slowly so at a decreasing return this is decreasing returns to scale okay moving on optimal combination of inputs the least cost combination of inputs or balance curve in this case i have uh, we have drawn two iso cost line which is k1 l1 and k2 l2 iso cost okay a kind of a budget budget line we have drawn and then uh, we have drawn two iso quant curve which is this one which is producing q1 100 units and the above one okay this one which is producing q2 200 units okay and we need to find out which iso uh, quant curve or which yeah which iso quant curve is better or which point is better on this iso quant curve and, uh, and all those so we have a few points for example a b p d we have four points okay in which uh, the iso uh, quant and iso cost are intersecting so maybe um, maybe at point b okay so at point B, if we are employing these many capitals, uh, this much capital and these many labors, so at point B, uh, with budget of K1, L1, at a lower budget, I am able to produce 100 units. Okay, At K1, L1 budget, I am able to produce 100 units at point B. Okay, At point A, my budget has increased to K2, L2. Okay, K2, L2. This is my budget and I am able to produce how much again 100 because a is the point which is lying on iso quant curve lower iso quant curve which is producing 100 so i am increasing the budget and i am producing uh, 100 units it doesn't make any sense so i am employing higher amount of capital and lower amount of labor and i am producing 100 units similarly at point d i am producing I have employed lower amount of capital and higher amount of labor still I am producing 100 units so at A and D I have increased my budget from K1 L1 was my initial budget at point B I increased the budget from uh, to K2 L2 still at point A and D I am producing 100 units so uh, this doesn't make any sense so I, A and D I cannot select I cannot employ these ma these many labors and I am producing only 100 units or this much of capital and employ less number of labors and I am producing 100 units so A and D are definitely rejected so at this curve uh, sorry at this budget K2 L2 and at this curve okay I am getting a point P whereas, whereas so I, if I increase the budget and employ m capital and n labors i can produce uh, 200 quantity so my quantity from 100 has increased to 200 at point b so if i employ um, proper amount of capital and proper amount of labor i can produce 200 quantity at the same k2 l2 budget so whether uh, if i have a budget of k1 l1 only then i'll use b point as uh, for production if i have uh, increase in the cap increase in the budget which is k2 l2 budget uh, i can uh, be at point p okay so being at point a and d it is uh, very much uneconomical okay being at point b is very much economical so that is the reason this is called as a balanced curve so this this is the role of managers uh, in order to uh, find out which is the best combination of anything in this case it is capital and labor but it is best combination of what we need to produce the items okay so maximum production can be achieved in this case so moving on this is a cobb douglas function okay uh, I'll just go through this the cobb douglas production function was proposed by Wixell uh, and tested against statistical evidence by charles cobb and paul douglas in 1928 it is one of the most popular and commonly uh, used production functions the cobb douglas production function is represented as q is equal to a k raised to alpha l raised to beta where alpha and beta are constants a is a technological parameter uh, alpha is the elasticity of the output which is uh, with respect to the capital and beta is the elasticity of 
the output with respect to labor okay so I'm going to same way um, the same thing which we studied uh, above uh, K is capital L is labor okay alpha is the elasticity of the output with respect to capital okay and beta is the elasticity of the output with respect to labor and A is a technological parameter so uh, what Cobb Douglas says what is the properties basically of Cobb Douglas production function we can go through this okay maybe, uh, it is, uh, maybe you will not get this for um, 7 or 10 marks you can get it for maybe 3 marks or maybe ma a rare chance of getting 7 marks also uh, Cobb Douglas production function that is similar to our whatever isocon curves is there okay so we are uh, in this case we are changing labor and we are changing capital and then we are finding what is the change in the quantity okay and you have alpha as the elasticity beta as also the elasticity with respect to labor and capital oh, sorry capital and labor respectively and then what is the change in the uh, quantity you are uh, finding out okay so moving on to the cost concepts so we have completed the production part where we are producing items uh, using various changing of various inputs how much uh, is the change in the output that we determine and then what is the cost involved in those production of those items uh, is regarding the cost uh, our concepts so well um, there are two types basically uh, in cost concept there is analytical cost concept and there is uh, accounting uh, concept okay so accounting concept you have opportunity cost actual cost you can go through this okay opportunity cost I have explained um, uh, this in class okay then there is business cost which is with which the business is incurring and full cost will be the full cost including opportunity cost or pre any preliminary cost or any cost which is not recorded properly in the business but you have incurred okay so any economical cost also will be included in the fu full cost then actual or explicit cost or implicit or imp imputed cost so actual cost is actually which you have incurred and implicit or imputed cost is uh, you uh, you have lost something which cannot be recorded you have lost an opportunity to sell uh, sell your product to any uh, to any person you have lost um, uh, some some a uh, agency contract or any contract uh, which uh, which could have given you much profit okay so that uh, will not be definitely recorded in the books of account okay like you have lost the contract uh, so you cannot make more profit or something like that that will not be recorded in the books of account but the, the, that will is definitely an implicit cost imputed cost okay so okay and then the last one is about out of pocket cost and book cost book cost is what you will be recording out of pocket pocket cost uh, you will not be recording anything but it is going the money is going out of the out of uh, your pocket okay so this is what it is you can go through this and then analytical cost fixed cost which will remain fixed variable cost which will vary as per the uh, product which you are buying or producing and then and uh, the total cost is the total of average and fixed cost and average cost you will be determining that uh, by total cost divided by the number of outputs or the number of products then the marginal cost is the difference between uh, the two total costs okay and the short run and long run cost short run cost refers to the uh, maybe at least uh, in a year whatever cost you are uh, incurring and long run cost will be uh, to buy uh, something uh, way pretty big like building or machinery or plant like that you will be buying so long run cost will be uh, uh, like that so at least uh, you will be using uh, you will be incurring that cost and you will be dividing it for maybe for 5 or 10 years like that and then uh, incremental cost and sunk cost incremental cost which you are getting it regularly sunk cost is you cannot recover anything ok for example you have uh, bought some items which have become obsolete and you cannot sell in the market they have just become becoming junk in your go downs uh, and they have rotten and you cannot recover that cost in any way or in terms of insurance or anything like that so those are sunk and same similar is about historical and replacement cost you can go through I, my most important thing I want to discuss is regarding the short 
theory of short run cost or put relations so you have short run cost and you have long run cost okay in short run again you have three okay this is linear cost function you have quadratic cost function and you have cubic cost function those are short run okay and in the long run we'll discuss it when we get there so short run cost may you have linear so this formula I am, I am getting so this is a total cost from the above you can see total cost is the total fixed cost which I am getting incurring plus total variable cost so fixed cost plus variable cost or total fixed cost plus total variable cost I am getting as total cost so in linear curve TC is equal to A plus BQ so A is my total fixed cost BQ is my total variable cost okay because Q is the quantity produced and B is the um, basically variable cost per unit okay so B is my variable cost per unit and Q is the quantity so uh, if I do a product of BQ then I'll be getting total variable cost whereas A is my total fixed cost as fixed cost is uh, generally is not given in the terms of per unit fixed cost is given in a lump sum amount uh, itself okay uh, so if I want to draw this okay this is my uh, x-axis represents my output y-axis represents my cost so as and when I am increasing the output my cost is also increasing uh, first is about total fixed cost total fixed cost will be irrespective whether I am producing any output at least in the short at least in the short run my fixed cost will remain same okay so to variable cost starts from basically from zero okay or maybe by one so as in when I'm uh, uh, buying or in uh, manufacturing items so my uh, for every output my cost is increasing at a constant rate okay so total cost is the addition of total fixed cost and total variable cost so the slope of total cost will be similar to sto uh, slope of total variable cost so these two will be parallel lines TC and TVC and the difference is about T uh, TFC in this so total cost will start somewhere from uh, here 60 where the total fixed cost has started and then it will increase in the way the total variable cost is increasing the same slope okay and there are two things uh, average cost and marginal cost average cost is uh, total cost upon quantity so I got A upon Q plus B and marginal cost is derivative of total cost with respect to Q okay so derivative of A plus BQ derivative of A which is 0 derivative plus uh, derivative of BQ which is B okay so that's the reason I'm getting marginal cost as B and uh, average cost as A by Q plus B so if I want to represent that okay, you can go through this table for uh, your understanding okay you can uh, check this much total fixed cost will 60 always total variable cost is the product of 10 into uh, Q so as in when the output is increasing this Q is increasing the total variable cost is increasing and in the same way the addition of these two okay we will we'll get total cost and marginal cost is B which we have found out after taking derivative of total cost so this is again constant average cost is using this formula we have got average cost like this so if we, we are plotting mar marginal cost and average cost we will be getting this the so marginal cost is 10 throughout average cost is slowly it is decreasing okay moving forward to quadratic so quadratic we have a function which is a plus bq which we have got from linear plus q square okay so in this case my cost is increasing exponentially so we are getting a quadratic function so you can see this output this is my cost this is my fixed cost which will remain same irrespective of whether it is linear quadratic or cubic my variable cost is increasing at a, this rate exponentially so that's the reason my total cost is also increasing at this rate so total cost basically follows total variable cost but the difference between these two lines is basically my fixed cost okay and so again we do if we do the same thing we find average cost by dividing it by Q so we get a by Q plus B plus, 
plus q and marginal q uh, marginal cost uh, we get by de uh, applying derivative and we are getting a uh, sorry b plus 2q we are getting marginal cost so in this case we will be getting this kind of curve so this is my average co average variable cost this is my average cost this is my marginal cost it is increasing slightly so you can see here there is a 5 so whatever we are getting we are uh, multiplying it by q and adding 5 that's the reason my margin cost is increasing slightly increasing slightly okay well again um, you can skip this if you are not getting it don't worry about that then we uh, the third one is about cubic cost function cubic cost function the formula goes tc is equal to a plus bq minus cq square plus q cube okay uh, and the same thing we'll be doing average cost we'll be finding out then marginal cost is derivative of total cost with respect to q we are finding out okay so using this formula derivative of a is 0 derivative of bq is q minus uh, derivative of cq square is 2 cq then derivative of q cube is 3 q square so what we have got here the same thing if you are representing it on a graph you can use table for your reference do you don't need to draw this or memorize this table it is just for the just for your reference okay you can uh, use this table to just determine how the graph uh, we are getting this is the graph of cubic function this is the total fixed cost which we have got this is the total variable cost of cubic function then total fixed cost of the cubic function cubic function in the sense that my in the short run itself but my uh, production uh, or the cost which I am incurring is of huge company I have a huge company so initially my cost is uh, high because I am producing low outputs and I am using huge machinery which is costing higher and then as and when I get more orders I will be producing more outputs so per unit cost of production uh, goes down okay so per unit total cost also goes down that's the reason um, uh, my cost is increasing but at a very lesser rate then after some uh, certain time when i am getting more and more orders i need to keep working my machinery maybe for uh, more than 12 hours or more than 14 hours in a day so that's the reason there is a wear and tear of machinery which i am taking care of there is repair works so uh, my cost starts increasing so just for example uh, so that's the reason my total cost curve looks increasing at a uh, at a higher rate here then it uh, slows down here somewhere and then it again increases at an increasing rate okay so this is this was all about uh, the short term cost now we move on to the long run cost output relations long run cost is basically a combination of many short run costs so LTC you can go through this in, uh, okay, I'll also read it in order to draw a long run total cost curve let us begin with a short run situation suppose that a firm having only one plant has its short run uh, cost as STC1 in panel A okay so uh, below there is a figure uh, let us know suppose that the firm decides to add two more plants over time one after other, another uh, as a result two more short run co total costs are added to STC1 in a manner shown by STC2 and STC3 an LTC can now be drawn through the minimum points of STC 1, 2, 3 and shown by LTC curve corresponding to each STC. STC here stands for short term, to, uh, short run total cost and LTC stands for long, uh, to, uh, sorry, long run total cost. Okay, so if you want to check this, this is what it is. So we are getting a cubic function again of STC 1. Okay, this is my short run cost okay it is coming like this STC2 this is my short run total cost of second plant then this is my short run cost of third plant so from here I am getting the long run cost which is going touching every short run cost and then coming here so this is my total uh, cost in the terms of long run it is touching the minimum and also going above just above the maximum of the three costs of three short term co uh, total cost okay so as you have uh, studied about the average cost also 
average total cost okay uh, so like ltc long run average cost lac is derived by com uh, combining the short run average uh, po cost curves lac so uh, same concept i'll just show it in the graph there is a short run average cost okay just like a saucer then a short run average cost 2 then short run average cost 3 so my long run will start from the f minimum point of sac1 and goes to the maximum point of sac3 so this is how we get the lac curve again uh, you need to go through this okay um, kind of important you need to understand because long run may only these two uh, graphs are there okay so don't leave this then uh, this completes our cost and i move on to the economies and diseconomies of scale and cost of production okay so in the one thing you need to remember in economies of scale is whenever you are producing your manufacturing your marketing your extracting in larger quantities you will have economies of scale and diseconomies you need to remember diseconomies means because of that large scale of production or manufacturing or man, uh, managing any item you are uh, you are failing because of that large scale it has become such large it is difficult to manufacture uh, difficult to handle difficult to uh, make pro profit out of it that's the reason you are getting diseconomies in that case okay so economies internal economies external economies in economies in production you can produce huge amount of products many products uh, at once so you will have economies in production your cost of per unit cost of production will in uh, decrease okay you have economies in purchase of inputs you can purchase large amount of inputs from the suppliers so the your suppliers are also ha very happy and you can produce a large amount uh, so he will give you much more discount so per unit uh, cost of buying also will uh, reduce managerial economics you have too many well skilled managers who will handle the situation very efficiently um, so it is very easy for you to run the business so you are having economies in the terms of managerial economics economies economist <laughs> basically so uh, economies in transport and storage you have a huge fleet of um, trucks or ships uh, you can transport uh, huge amount of uh, orders easily you have economies of transport you have economies of storage you have too many storage um, uh, storage plants where you can store a large amount of materials maybe you have a cold storage of a few acres and you can uh, store uh, agricultural outputs for a longer period of time then you will have economies in storage as well and external economies where you have a uh, large scale hiring uh, process large scale purchase of raw material large scale acquisition of external finance some so you have uh, economies in that case now diseconomies is about internal diseconomies where your managers is becoming in uh, inefficient uh, they are not able to handle that much pressure that uh, that much work because of economies you have expanded your business in such a way that your manager is not able to handle the business so uh, he is becoming inefficient so that is the reason you are facing diseconomies because of that large scale your labor is getting inefficient because of the change in technology or uh, any reason related to that uh, because of large scale production he is not able to run the machine properly or some uh, similar reasons then external diseconomies uh, because of uh, uh, too much oh, what do you say um, the outside conditions have become uh, such like that uh, that you are not able to uh, handle it properly because of increasing or expansion of the firm or uh, the industry is expanding or new technology is coming in so you are not able to handle it so that's the reason you are facing diseconomies Okay, so the final one of this uh, module, uh, I'll do sums. Uh, maybe I have uh, done sums may many in the class. Okay, and I've uh, shared the uh, few solved sums also in in our group. So you can refer that. Okay, and understand the concept so you can solve the problems. Don't just um, rectify the sums and don't just remember the formulas. Uh, formulae. So uh, the last part, I'll just go through this break-even analysis. Okay. So there, what is what is the meaning of break-even? Well, 
what is the meaning of break even you can go through it is a no profit no loss situation uh, every business need to find out their break even analysis in order to determine from where our profit is start actual profit is starting okay and there are some assumptions in this okay let's go through these assumptions and uh, linear functions uh, you have mainly linear function whenever it is said oh, explain break even analysis using graph or what is um, what is break even analysis for 7 or 10 marks then you can um, write from here maybe okay depends upon the question does depend upon the marks for the questions so on the x axis we, uh, okay here i have output here i have cost and revenue so this is the linear cost function where my fixed cost is same throughout my variable cost is like this my fixed uh, my total cost is starting from uh, fixed cost and following the variable cost path okay so this is same in this case my total revenue has been added so revenue will start from zero okay it will cross the total cost point and it will cross at b that means at point b my total revenue and total cost are same that means whatever revenue i am getting and whatever cost i have incurred is exactly same that means i am not having any profit and any loss and the point b is called as break even point so below point b my total cost is higher my revenue is lower so that's the reason i am getting loss here and after point b my revenue is increasing my cost is below the revenue so at this stage i am having profit so my point b is the break even point and point b if i drop it to the x axis to the output so at 20 output that means if i sell produce 20 units at least 20 units will give me my no profit no loss situation and those 20 units if i will sell at somewhere around 300 rupees okay 300 rupees me i am selling 200 uh, to 20 units then at 300 rupees is again my break even in terms of amount okay so this is about break even analysis in linear function there are some limitations to it non linear function this is my cubic total cost here and my total revenue is like this in this case and i am getting two break even points at q1 and at q2 so before b1 my total revenue is here down my cost is up so i am having loss here so definitely i'll start production from matlab uh, uh, start my profit calculation of my profit after q1 so after q1 my revenue is increasing my cost is below so till b2 so between b1 and b2 my revenue is higher and my cost is lower so between b2 b1 and b2 i am having profit after b2 my again revenue is going down cost is going up so after b2 also i am having loss so when my revenue and cost so basically uh, my cost is following a cubic function and revenue is following this function so i'll be having profit only between q1 and q2 i should not be producing more items and sell and try to sell more than q2 nor i'll be producing less items and uh, sell less than q1 i should exactly produce and sell my items between q1 and q2 quantities so this is about break even analysis when there is a non linear function the next is uh, well this is contribution okay there is some technical error printing mistake okay so this is contribution analysis contribution analysis is um, basically contribution is when your revenue is been deducted by variable cost your per unit revenue of a item uh, minus a per unit variable cost of that item you get the contribution so this is how you represent it in graph this is my variable cost i have not run fixed cost in this uh, this is my variable cost okay this is my revenue this is my total cost here i am having a break even point 
the difference between total cost and va variable cost this difference can be called as a fixed cost okay it is a fixed cost okay so from where i am getting uh, starting to make profit after bp point so above this so this triangle which is shaded this is i'm in this triangle i'm making profit but my contribution for every unit uh, starts from here itself okay so moving forward profit volume ratio okay so profit volume ratio this is the formula s minus v upon s s stands for selling cost v is variable cost uh, into 100 so this is my uh, ratio into 100 you can uh, ignore if you are uh, taking a ratio but if you are calculating percentage and you are writing it in a percent form then you can uh, use multiply by 100 okay so pv ratio for example is 20% or uh, in the terms of ratio you can represent it as 0.2 for calculation purpose in your numericals then uh, bb in sale value is about fixed expense divided by pv ratio this is one of the formula to calculate a uh, bb in sale value sale value is uh, your amount okay how much rupees uh, you need to earn in order to achieve a break even then another formula yeah another formula is here yeah uh, bp in units is fixed expenses divided by contribution per unit so in how many units you need to sell in order to reach the break even is is this uh, formula so whatever the contribution of an item per unit you are getting okay if you divide that if you divide that from fixed cost then you will be getting a break even in terms of units the next is margin of safety margin of safety is basically the difference between your actual sales and bp sales what uh, if your bp sales is suppose maybe 5 units that means if you sell 5 units you will be having no loss no profit situation but suppose you are selling 8 units okay you have not kept a target of 5 you have kept a target of 8 units and you have able to achieve the target of that 8 units so 8 units if you are selling okay and 5 units uh, at 5 units you are uh, getting break even point okay so at 5 and 8 units difference which is 3 units is called as the margin of safety okay and there are many formulas to calculate in margin of safety in this case in terms of amount and in terms of quantity where sa is my actual sales sb is my sales at break even divided by actual sales into 100 this is my margin of safety or this formula or this formula. okay you can go to this profit volume analysis and this limitations and anything and some important questions which i found uh, from many questions previous portions i found okay so that's that's how, this is how i complete uh, this module a uh, numericals i'll not uh, make a video of it you can um, go through it and you can ask me uh, if you feel any doubts uh, if you find any doubts in numericals as well okay i'm ready to help you can come to my desk and we can discuss regarding any numericals if you have any doubts okay Thank you for listening.